Good morning and good morning. In today's world of immediacy, we can hardly wait weeks or even days for something, let alone generations or centuries. But the story of God's people shows us that waiting in hope isn't a sit back and do nothing kind of waiting. Advent hope is active. It is always listening to God, always learning from God, always walking with God. Please join responsibly in our Advent Litany of Hope on this, the first Sunday of Advent. Dear God, as we begin our Advent pilgrimage, grant us courage to hope. Hope for your presence, hope for your promise, hope for your cross. We are a people of hope. Our hearts are full of anticipation for the coming of our beloved Christ God. For God is to be among us, and we will see a great light in the midst of our night. We will now light the candle of hope. Carl and Lorraine Peter will come forward and light the Advent candle of hope. And Heather is going to. It's fine. Let us sing together the first verse, Away in a Manger. Please join me in our call to worship. Christ is coming, we will keep awake. Christ is coming, we will be ready. Christ is coming, he will gather his people from the ends of the earth. Praise be to God, we will worship and prepare. Let us worship God as we pray together the prayer of praise and adoration. Heavenly Father, when despair and doubt surround us, you are always there to help us find hope in your promise. Your word reminds us that you are our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Let this truth be a source of hope in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's rise to our feet and sing together joyously Comfort, comfort, you my people. Number three in your Presbyterian hymnal. Comfort, comfort, you my people.
Preparing for Christ's coming requires honest examination of our lives and our hearts. Let us turn to God in prayer to confess our sins. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of hope, the wars and rumors of wars betray our addiction to violence, our destructive and dehumanizing way. We deserve your judgment and condemnation, yet you remain faithful, a steadfast source of hope during our warring madness. Holy God, turn us from evil, return us to Christ in his path of peace, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Amen. Assurance of pardon. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. few announcements this morning. You notice in your parish press the various meetings on our calendar of events. The worship services for December 3, 10, 17. On the 24th, uh, Christmas Eve is, a, is, is on a Sunday. We will be having our normal Sunday morning service, but at 9 o'clock on Christmas Eve night, we will be having a remote service. And so you can tune in with Zoom and whatever technology you have, and we will worship and praise God at nine o'clock on December 24th. At this time, I'm gonna ask our own Zachary Strickland to come forward to share a minute for mission. Good morning, church. Good morning. So this year, the Christian Education will be continuing our annual giving tree, where we adopt a family um, and make their Christmas special. So in the parlor, we will have um, the tags. Um, we have a family of five, a single father and four children, two boys and two girls. So you'll be able to go to the parlor and grab your tag off the tree and get a gift for that family to make their Christmas special. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Many of us remember when Zachary was a little guy. <laughs> and now there he is. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Zachary. Also, we point out that our, one of the traditions that we have here at the Teaneck Church is that we decorate our sanctuary for the holiday season. And today is the deadline for purchasing Christmas poinsettias. They will be placed in the windows and they will be available in, uh, in the church. And if you purchase one or two or whatever, if you want to take it with you, you can certainly do that. If you want to leave it here to decorate the sanctuary for the holiday season, you also can do that. Even though today is the deadline, it's not too late if you want to call on Zoom or any other technology and order your poinsettia. The cost is $10 per plant. So we look forward to your participation in the uh, annual poinsettia decoration. Our scripture this morning is from the prophet Isaiah, 
the ninth chapter, the sixth verse, one that we're so familiar with during this Advent as we lead into the Christmas. Hear the word of God. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. May God add his blessing to both the reading and the hearing of his word. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. Although it's raining outside, I think the Spirit of God is here with us with the beautiful music that we've had and is ushering the, the season of Advent and Christmas in very nicely. Thank you so much for the beautiful music and the voices behind me. I always love it. This, this church has beautiful music and I thank God for the musicians. 
I am going to start, as I usually like to do, with a little humor. And this one is a very short story uh, entitled, No Room in the Inn? Question mark. A boy wanted to be Joseph in the Sunday school Christmas pageant. But when he was cast as the landlord of the inn, he objected loudly. He wanted to be Joseph, but no one was listening to him. However, when the pageant was presented, Mary and Joseph knocked on the door of the inn and asked the landlord if he had room for them. Now we all know the story. But the, little, the boy smiled and said, Yes, sure, plenty of room, come on in. Hope deferred. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you are the hope of a very anxious and fearful world. We pray that this Advent will come to help us slow down, help us to listen to your voice and focus on what's really important. We place our hope in you as we prepare our hearts to celebrate your birth this Christmas. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. The first week of Advent and the first Sunday of Advent mark, Advent mark the beginning of the Advent season in the Christian liturgical calendar. Advent is a period of preparation and anticipation for the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ on Christmas Day and the hope that he brings to the world. During this week of Advent, we reflect on the theme of hope and the idea that Christ's coming into the world brings hope to a world in need of salvation. And oh, this world is truly in need of salvation. As we gather together to celebrate the season of Advent, in the midst of the darkness that surrounds us, Advent whispers a message of hope, reminding us that of the light that is yet to come. However, there seems to be each year a tale of two Christmases. The Madison Avenue Christmas has created a season about store sales, big screen TVs, internet sales, Black Friday, Internet Monday, and on and on and on. A few years ago, the supply chain had people up in arms. It was a threat to Christmas because people would not get their gifts on time, as if the gifts were the only reason for the season. Increasingly, we are seeing the spelling of Christmas with the Christ being replaced with an X. Who stole Christ from Christmas? Let's not get it twisted. Jesus is the reason for the season. And when you take Christ out of Christmas, you are taking away hope. The birth of Jesus is a reminder of the hope we have in God. We all need hope, and Jesus Christ and his birth in Bethlehem give us that hope. Jesus' coming was hope fulfilled and hope assured. The Christmas season is my favorite time of the year. The carols, the traditions, the spirit, and the celebration with family is all a part of that. Christmas, but more central to my love, is Christmas is the wonder and possibility, the mystery and glory of Christ's entrance into the world because it gave us a reason to hope. The spiritual definition of hope is the divine spark within us, a sacred belief that surpasses circumstance and connects us to the eternal. It is the unwavering trust in a higher power, a guiding light that illuminates our path, reminding us that even in the darkest moments, there exists the possibility of transformation 
and divine intervention. The Bible tells us that hope that goes unfulfilled makes us feel bad, but when it's fulfilled, it gives life. And Isaiah 9, 6 foretells the coming of the Messiah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This was the Savior everyone was looking for. They were looking forward to the birth of Christ. There was hope in the birth of Christ. Christmas is about the birth of Christ. Christmas is hope. But for so many people, Christmas is not the most wonderful time of the year. So many people are struggling. So many people are dealing with loneliness. So many people are grieving the loss of a family member or friend. So many people have financial difficulties. Many people are un unemployed or underemployed. So many people are suffering through depression and family matters. So many people are sick and poor, and as we call it today, have food insecurities. These people find it hard to believe that this is the most wonderful time of the year. These people find it hard to have hope. And when we take Christ out of Christmas, we remove any possibility of finding that hope. Over the next few weeks leading up to Christmas, I want us all to reflect upon the awesome miracle that happened in that stable over 2,000 years ago. And let's strip away all that covers its true beauty and see how it still affects us today. Hopefully, we will find underneath all the layers of man-made ideas the true meaning of Christmas. And in discovering this meaning, we will be directed towards the hope that is found only in Jesus Christ. Hope shows up in many ways for many people. I recently read a story of a self-made millionaire, Eugene Land, who greatly changed the lives of a sixth grade class in East Harlem. Mr. Lang had been asked to speak to a class of 59 sixth graders. What could he say to inspire these children? most of whom would drop out of school. He wondered how he could get these predominantly black and Puerto Rican children to even look at him. Scrapping his notes, he decided to speak to them from his heart. He said, stay in school and I'll help pay the college tuition for every one of you. At that moment, the lives of those students changed for the first time, they had hope. One student said, I had something to look forward to, something waiting for me. It was a golden feeling. Nearly 90% of that class went on to graduate from high school. Oh, this was hope for these young people. They didn't give up on themselves despite their circumstances. Friends, hope is an amazing thing. Hope can transform a life with no meaning into a life that is full of purpose and direction. So when is hope given? When is it fulfilled? Jesus answers both of those tall orders. Jesus brought hope with him for all generations. He is hope fulfilled for previous generations, many of whom had waited and prayed for his coming. For them, he was fulfillment. For us, he is the hope of the world assured through his work on the cross. Hope was given as a gift from God in Jesus, a baby, and the word became flesh. The birth of Jesus is a reminder of hope that we have in the Lord. He sent his son to save the world from sin. The hymn, O Holy Night, proclaims a thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices. And as it was then, we too are in a weary world. We all need hope, and Jesus Christ and his birth in Bethlehem should give us that hope. 
But there are times we miss hope. We don't hold out long enough. Listen to the story of Florence Chadwick, who was an American swimmer known for her long distance open water swimming. She was the first woman to swim across the English Channel in both directions. In 1952, Florence attempted to swim in ocean waters from Catalina Island to the California shore. It was a foggy day and the waters were choppy. Her mother was in a boat beside her, cheering her on to keep her going despite her pain and exhaustion. Finally, Florence begged to be lifted out of the water. When the mist cleared after a few minutes, she saw that the shore was less than half a mile away. At a news conference later, she said that all she could see in the moment was fog. And upon reflection, she felt that if she could have seen the shore, she would have made it. We need hope even in a fog. We need hope today because we cannot see what is beyond. We needed hope in the pandemic. Oh, did we need hope in the pandemic. But we made it through. Hope helps us withstand pressures, challenges, losses, and demands. Hope helps us to persevere, sometimes through the unimaginable. Hope keeps climbers climbing up Mount Everest, when everything within them says to give up. Climbers have their eyes on the prize, the joy that is coming at the summit. But what does it really mean for us today in our lives? I can tell you that the families of those hostages in Gaza know what hope is. The hostages who are still in cap being captive know what hope is. Hope keeps us getting up each morning even with pain in our joints, not being able to move freely. Hope keeps us going forward even when our minds are sad, depressed, and afraid. Hebrews 12, 2 says that it, is, it was actually because of joy awaiting him that Jesus endured the cross on our behalf. We were worth it to him. He willingly gave up his life so that we could have eternal hope that could never be diminished. But you may ask, through all the ups and downs in life, especially in 2023, how do we keep our eyes on hope when we can't see the shore? We can't even see through the fog. We can't see beyond. Well, the answer still is in Hebrews 12, which begins with a challenge for us to run the endurance, run with endurance the race that has been marked out for each of us. To not let anything get in the way of us finishing. It will take perseverance, but our path is actually marked out for us by God himself. The answer continues in Hebrews where it says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. But it can be really difficult to do, to choose to look away from all of our challenges, stresses, disappointments, and fears. If you have problems finding hope, perhaps a change of viewpoint will help. Let's give thanks for unknown blessings already on their way. Let's focus on the blessings yet to come. What a concept. Can you believe that unknown blessings are already on their way? Let's praise him in advance. One of the best ways of cultivating a positive attitude is to have positive thoughts. And one of the best ways of having more positive thoughts is to feeling grateful for what you have. When, you, when we keep reminding ourselves constantly of our challenges, when we go over and over in our minds all that is happening to us and focus on our fears, we can find it difficult to find hope. It tends to rob us of peace and actually increases anxiety and hopelessness. 
It takes discipline to keep our eyes on Jesus, especially in the midst of a storm, but he is the answer for our peace. We have to learn to stop the negative trains of thoughts and choose to focus on being thankful. We need to rely on scripture with, to help us to always remember the truth. We need to keep our minds on the faithfulness of God. What he has done in the past, he will do again. Jesus is, one, is the one who has the power to calm the storms. He gives eternal hope even if our hope is threatened. He will make a way when there is no way. He counsels us, teaches us, and humbles us. And oh, how wonderful, he also forgives us. As Christmas approaches, my prayer for each one of us is that we choose to lift our eyes off of our circumstances or the fact that we cannot see the end, we cannot see beyond the fog, and instead focus on Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. I pray that the light of hope shines through each of us this season and always. May we remember that the hope that we find in the birth of Jesus, the hope that we find in the knowledge of God sending his son to save us all, is the spark that helps us to share that hope with others in whatever form. May we reach out to others to give words of encouragement, extend a helping hand, or show kindness in any way that can help someone lift their spirits. Let that be our gift to our Savior all year round. Take care of each other in the midst of our own struggles. Scripture tells us as believers, we are to stand out as people of hope in this hopeless world. So as we continue through this Christmas season of 2023, let us enjoy the Madison Avenue version of Christmas. But don't let that version eclipse the Bethlehem version of Christmas, the real Christmas. Let's keep Christ in Christmas always. While the Madison Avenue version offers us many things, that version does not offer us hope. Remember this, hope is not defined by the absence of hardship. Rather, hope is found in God's grace in the midst of hardship. Hope is found in God's promise to give us a future when we have the, and when we have that hope, we can look forward to the most wonderful time of the year being not just one season, but all year long. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. amen. As always, Elder Mason, we thank you for encouraging and words and bringing us that message of hope this morning as we begin the Advent into the Christmas season. And because of those uplifting words, Christmas season is officially underway at the Teaneck Church. So we will have hope. And again, Elder Mason, thank you so much for your very encouraging words, as always. Our offering this morning is based on 2 Peter, the third verse, chapters 8 to 15. All things in heaven and earth belong to God, who is coming in glory to reveal a new creation. Let us present our tithes and offerings to the Lord.
Join me as we pray together the prayer of dedication to these gifts. Christ calls us to live generous and grateful lives. Take these gifts we offer today, O oh God, and use them to the fulfillment of Christ's ministry. May these gifts help to free the captives, heal the sick, comfort the lonely, feed the hungry, heal the wounded, as Christ's hands and feet use us to in service to building your beloved community. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And one concern I want to share with you this morning, many of you were not aware and a couple weeks ago, November 13, Blanche's youngest brother, the youngest of five, passed away after a long illness. Melvin had made it clear to us over the years, all of those Wilkins children were born in Virginia. And Melvin made it clear to us if anything was ever to happen to him, he wanted to go home back to Virginia. Where we were able to do that, funeral was last week, and he was interred in the family cemetery in Dauphin, Virginia on yesterday. 
So I just want to bring that to your attention. And thanks for your prayers. We've heard from some of you. Thanks for your prayers and your concern. This morning, we ask continued prayers for Mary Coleman, for Gloria Jenkins, for Mary Bennett, for Aria Cho, for Wayne Cho, for Carmen Henry, for Carl and Sylvia Johnson, for Audrey Joseph, Sandra Joseph, Yvonne Joseph, Jean Kenlock, Edgar Miller, Henry Robinson, Daniel Santiago, and Charles Warren. And we ask for all who in this transitory life are in trouble, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We ask that you pray for them this morning. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing us to another season of Advent. We are thankful for your goodness each day. We come before you this morning grateful for your constant and open presence in our lives. Help us to find comfort in knowing that you are our shelter and refuge in times of trouble. When the storms of life rage around us, we trust in your unfailing love to guide us through the darkness. When we feel alone or afraid, we can turn to you for comfort and protection. We trust you entirely because you are our hiding place and strong tower. May your warm embrace always surround us and may we be a beacon of hope to others searching for your love and protection. Thank you for being our rock and our fortress. We give you all the honor and praise. Heavenly Father, we pray for this world. Advent is a time for remembering and reflecting on the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray that you will turn our hearts toward you as Christmas approaches. Let us not get caught up in the hustle and bustle of the season and miss the chance to celebrate the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love that you sent to us on that first Christmas. Dear Lord, we pray for this church. We pray for each member and their families. We pray that you stop by each family and supply all their needs. We pray for those who are sick and shut in may they be healed. We pray for those who are bereaved, may they be comforted. And we pray for those who have asked for prayers and we ask that you bless them with your presence in their struggles, difficulties, and their challenges. We thank you, Lord, and praise you in advance. That first Christmas, you gave us the gift of hope, wrapped in a swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Thank you, Father for your immeasurable gift. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Amen. This we invite you to remain seated as we sing joyously hymn 501, Bread of Heaven, on Thee We Feed. Bread of Heaven, on Thee We Feed.
to the celebration of Holy Communion. Come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, our Creator. You have given us life and second birth in your spirit. Once we were no people, but now we are your people. You raised up the church as a witness to the resurrection, breathing into it your life and power. From worlds apart, you gathered us together. When we go astray, you welcome us home. Always, love, your love has been steadfast. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In love with you and in compassion for all, Jesus healed and taught, challenged and comforted, welcomed and saved. He formed a new community promising to be with his disciples wherever two or three are gathered and sending them on his mission of hope and healing in the world. Jesus trusted his life to you and went freely to his death so the world might be set free from suffering and sin. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts that you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine and the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Hasten the day, O God, when all the saints of the ages will feast with you in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you in the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us eat together. And let us drink together. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament. You have united us with Christ and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. By God's grace, we receive this gift and are made one in Christ. God's grace was not in vain, so we believe and so we proclaim. By God's grace, we receive this gift and are made one in Christ. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn this morning Number 432, Song of Hope. Let's rise to our feet and sing together joyfully as we prepare to leave God's house. Number 432, Song of Hope. people of hope. Let hope live in our hearts and share the hope of Christ with all we meet. 
May we share hope by noticing someone else's humanity. May we share hope by listening to someone else's story. May we share hope by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share hope. As we go out into the wonder of God's creations, may we share hope with all those we meet. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our postlude, after which we invite those at home to unmute yourselves and join us in a time of friendship. Those present in the sanctuary this morning, let us greet one another in a time of friendship in the spirit of Christmas, bringing in the tone of hope. 